um, a, a specially ordered through us and purchased a carbon fiber wheelchair, which was, um, if I'm not wrong, probably $6,000. Yeah. I cannot design my business, obviously, to serve one or two people. We are designing mm -hmm. it to service as many as we can. The, the good part here is that, that insurance companies, they are realizing, actually, the value of the accessories. And the good, really good news is that, that federal and state plans, a lot of them, they are covering these accessories. It is great. Yeah, but Steve, uh, prescribers and patients, unfortunately, they, they do not know. So mm -hmm. we try our best to tell them at the time of dispensing. Although, a, I mean, obviously, I cannot make this decision of adding accessories. Um, a prescriber has to back me up. And again, the same rule follows. I need the physician written order. I need some justification, actually, that why these things uh, will be important. But what I'm saying here that is doable and the insurance companies, they are realizing it, which is a really good thing. Great. Of course, yes, this is, this, 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 is a great, this is a great question. So basically the way pair, and again, when I talk pair, obviously the biggest pair we have is the federal. And a lot of insurance companies, instead of creating their own rules, they only amended their rules and it's easier for them to just pick up the federal guidelines. So what happens that, you know, I mean, a, a small, well, it's not a small pair, but any pair, like for, for example, a DC Medicaid, as compared to Medicare. So DC Medicare obviously did not want to use a lot of their resources. They picked up the Medicare guidelines and then they made a small amendments. So this is how insurance companies commonly work. So they, they, bigger, they, they look at the, 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 you know, the bigger pair and then they make their own alignments a little bit and make those changes. So what determines, first of all, uh, they use a method of progression and which I 100% agree is that, that they would like to see if a certain treatment plan worked for a patient or not before we jumped onto a really more extensive treatment plan. So they go with the progression of simplicity. That one thing they, they kind of use. When they use this progression method, they will be asking us and demanding that we show them and prove them the progression. Meaning is that, that there has to be a failure of a certain stage in order for us working along with the prescribers to move to the next stage. So that's one thing where they would like to see. There are very straightforward qualification criteria and there are several of them and we go through the checklist item. But the, to answer this question that what qualifies for a wheelchair, I will only say just one very simple thing from a manual wheelchair to motorized. So if we look at this picture, how a wheelchair is going to be used, a manual wheelchair. If I put myself in a wheelchair, then how exactly I'm going to be using this wheelchair. So basically I need my arms and upper body strength to move and maneuver the wheelchair to apply the brakes safely. And I should be able to make a 360 degree turn frequently. This is a very simple and basic thing. If I'm not able to do this, that would be the first qualification criteria. And it has to be bagged, obviously, because we need support from the prescriber. So they have to back this up that yes, we are seeing this and the upper body strength is slightly missing. Um, from the motorized wheelchair, when the deterioration is, is happening to someone, there are, there, are, there are some patients who are paralyzed actually 